national headlines. In April, these eight people were killed. Several more were injured when a former employee opened fire. Now, we knew the shooter, Brandon Hull, was on law enforcement's radar more than a year before this shooting took place. But tonight, for the first time, you're about to see new information, and you are also going to see the specifics from that shooter's own mother. It is an exclusive conversation with Fox 59's Angela Canote. Sheila Hull doesn't want sympathy. She wants to say she's sorry. She details the steps she took trying to get her son help and says in order to stop the next mass shooter, red flags need to be taken more seriously. 8951 Maribel Road. 11 p.m. April 15th. Caller heard 10 shots. Brandon Hull drove to FedEx where he used to work. We can hear the shots. Within minutes, police say the 19-year-old randomly killed four people outside. The rifle inside here. And four people inside the facility. Four more down inside the building. Brandon then turned the gun on himself. I won't grieve his death. I can't. I grieve the victim's deaths because it's not anything I ever thought would happen. Brandon grew up enjoying fishing and roller coasters, but Sheila says from the age of three, Brandon struggled with obsessive compulsive disorder, often felt alone, and could not control his anger. That was right around the time Brandon's dad died of suicide. Sheila shared Brandon's medical records dating back more than a decade that show he likely suffered from an anxiety disorder with panic attacks, major depressive disorder, and he thought of suicide often. I know that he had problems and I did try to get help. I tried so hard. Then I thought mainly the fight was so that he wouldn't kill himself. In 2013, at just 11 years old, Brandon was arrested for the first time, charged with battery, criminal confinement, and intimidation. After he kicked and punched his mom, Sheila says he stabbed her, slightly injuring her. Brandon was held in a juvenile facility for a few hours, and weeks later went before a judge and was given probation. After that, Brandon got some counseling, but Sheila says he was still suspended from school several times for fighting. In 2014, she started homeschooling him. He continued counseling off and on. But in March of 2020, Sheila was so frightened of Brandon's anger, she asked police for help. For any mother to get to that point, that's a red flag. I didn't sit on the phone and say, my baby might, you know, hurt himself or something like that. I went beating on doors, knocking them down if I had to. On March 2nd, Sheila went with Brandon to an army surplus store and he bought a gun. She says she went so she knew what he was doing. She believes Brandon wanted to die from suicide by cop. To me, he was going to kill himself and he needed help. He needed detained, he needed counseling, he needed medication. The store was out of bullets, so while Brandon slept, Sheila made a plan and went to East District Roll Call in person. Several IMPD officers, including members of the Mobile Crisis Assistance Team, or MCAT, came to their home. Brandon was handcuffed, his shotgun confiscated, and he was taken to Eskenazi. Sheila hoped they at least would put him on a 72-hour hold. No longer than two hours was he at Eskenazi. And then I get a call, well, I'm walking home, or are you coming to pick me up? According to the medical records, Brandon was seen by a doctor who wrote, Brandon denied wanting to die via police and that he feels fine. Sheila believes that if the concerns she raised about Brandon's mental instability were enough for police to seize his gun, authorities should have used Indiana's red flag law, named after police officer Jake Laird, to keep Brandon from getting more guns in the future. He should have been red flagged. I'm sorry. Jake Laird's parents worked so hard to have that law, so nothing like this would happen again. Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears declined to talk to us for this story, but said in April that because Brandon surrendered his gun, there wasn't a reason to pursue the case further. Sheila said that was a mistake. He needed help. Ultimately, that's not what we got, because you see the outcome, the horrific happening, awful. After that incident, the FBI was contacted to take a look at what police described as very disturbing neo-Nazi content on Brandon's computer. Sheila first met with a member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force in April of 2020. And he turned to me and said, your son hits every red flag for a mass shooter. And that's when I say, well, then you need to go and arrest him and take his computer. On April 15th, the agent and a state trooper went to talk with Brandon. 
Sheila wrote about that meeting after the mass shooting, recalling Brandon felt traumatized by that meeting. They asked him about buying the gun, if he got on 4chan, and if he liked My Little Pony. Sheila told us Brandon was angry. The agent questioned his obsession with My Little Pony, saying it was how neo-Nazis talked to each other. <laughs> Sheila said Brandon told the agent he hadn't talked to anyone concerning neo-Nazi rhetoric, and the FBI could look on his computer. We reached out to the FBI to confirm this conversation Brandon had with the agent, but they declined to talk to us. During the next several months, Brandon bought two more guns using his stimulus money. One cost $1,000. Sheila says he became more unstable, even calling the FBI agent to confront him about the neo-Nazi accusations. Sheila took him for emergency counseling. And he's like, you know, this is stressing me out and this is people I have to deal with. According to this letter, the Midtown Westside Clinic was understaffed on Friday, March 19th of 2021. And after waiting four and a half hours, Brandon could not be seen. Three days later, Brandon met with a licensed clinical social worker saying, quote, I can get very, very angry. Records of the session show Brandon said he doesn't have empathy. He doesn't care about the lives of others. He was deemed a moderate suicide risk and given a suicide plan. Nine days later, March 31st, Brandon met with a different social worker with a very similar message. The social worker also detailed Brandon's experience with the FBI and the police saying, Brandon admitted he tried to hang himself after the experience. Then a day before the mass shooting at the FedEx facility. And I needed him to tell them that he hit me so that they would understand that this was at a level where maybe there's some more flags for you. In the final hours before taking eight innocent lives, Sheila was with Brandon as he wrapped up a counseling session. Sheila told me she asked for more time. He scheduled several weekly sessions, and then time was up. These eight people killed in a matter of seconds. I just want people to know that if there's something wrong, I wish I could tell them who to call because it can tell them. I mean, maybe they could call me and I would try to help them because now I have nothing. You want to see me bust down some doors and get you some help? I bet I do. Maybe I didn't do it for my son, but I will for you. During a news conference in July, the FBI told us there was no racially motivated violent extremism ideology that was identified. Investigators called Brandon's crimes an act of suicidal murder and a way for Brandon to demonstrate his masculinity. Sheila doesn't know what to call it, but her son hated himself. She asked me to please share with the victim's families how sorry she is, and if they ever need anything from her, she said she is here for you. Angela Gano, Fox 59 News. Wow, a mother's heart tonight. So many red flags, it is chilling. And now we will all pray for change. To see more of Angela's conversation with Sheila Hull, we did post extended clips on our website, fox59.com. Click on this story on our homepage. You can also text interview to 317-632-5900, and you will get a link sent right to your phone. Yeah, quite an interview. So very chilling, as you said, no doubt about it. Wow.